Hey everyone, welcome to the beginner's tutorial. So uh, this is, you can say, the first stage of the beginner's tutorial. If you're completely new to this, uh, this would be actually great for you. At least you'll know what to do. Now, you got a few buildings here. You got obviously your uh, rocket building where you build your rockets, which is here. If you click this, you get into your rocket building. Here you build your uh, space planes. And uh, here's your vehicle assembly building or rocket building. And here is your tracking center where you can track all the stuff that you have in orbit or on different planets. You can track all the little things you have, all the little ships and stuff flying about that you have sent into space. So first thing that you're going to do is obviously go to your vehicle assembly building or uh, VAB. Once in your VAB, you're going to get an option to select your uh, pod. Pod obviously stores either... Uh, the actual uh, Kerbals, uh, that uh, the manpower in the pod itself. The pod, if it's manned, it provides its own power. So if you pick any of these manned pods, pretty much, I think even this one has a two-seater, yeah. So this is even manned as well. So you have all these little pods, different sizes, of course, which means different capacities. The big one, such as this, has three people in it, and this has one. Now, remember, each pod has its own weight. The main thing is what you got to know is that the pods with... Uh, the passenger capacity produce their own electricity now you might ask why is that important pretty much if your ship has no electricity it won't do anything so if you decide to pick an unmanned pod make sure you put your own electricity but let's not complicate it this is the beginner so let's just start off with the basic stuff so let's pick the one man pod so this is what you get now you might be confused and a little bit afraid because you realize you have so many options you know you have controls structures all the other stuff now let's just break it down really simply uh, a jet is pretty much uh, a jet engine which requires fuel. So you have two types of engines. You have your uh, jet engine, which is obviously you can say the same engine that an airplane has, which requires uh, these fuel tanks. It requires, you see on the bottom it says resources. Resources, it says liquid fuel. Now a jet engine, there's two types. You have the basic one and then you have uh, the turbojet engine. Obviously the turbojet engine is more powerful you know, for higher altitudes. Now, the jet engines only require the fuel tank that has liquid fuel. If you go to the fuel tanks here, you see the resources at the bottom here. The resources show liquid fuel 180, oxidizer 220. This has liquid fuel and oxidizer. I can use, of course, these tanks with liquid fuel and oxidizer with the jet engines, but the jet engines will only consume the liquid fuel from this tank, not the oxidizer. Now, the engine that consumes liquid fuel and the oxidizer are liquid engines. Of course, you have here, you have your liquid engines. So pretty much you have two types of engines. You have the liquid engine and you have the jet engine. The jet engine requires only liquid fuel, which are the tanks here. And then you have the liquid engine, which are these ones, as well as these mini, mini ones. And you have this midget one as well. And, and they also require liquid fuel and oxidizer. How do you know what the engine requires? Well, if you move on top of your engine, it says at the bottom propellants, liquid fuel 0 0.9 and oxidizer 1.1. So I know this is obviously a liquid fuel. It means I got to give it one of these tanks. You have, I think, a mini, mini liquid fuel tank here, which has liquid fuel 10 and oxidizer 12.2. So let's just keep it basic. Let's first put a fuel tank. And then let's put our engine. It can be this one or it can be this one. That's pretty much what you need, no? You need a, a cockpit for your people to live in. You need a fuel tank and you need an engine. Then you hit launch. You're going to hit launch. That's what you're going to do. I'm going to try to keep this as quick and as short as possible. So here we are now what you're going to do is shift you're going to the left shift if you're going to hold it it goes all the way up and the left control you see the accelerator goes down so left shift and then you hit space bar and off you go now with w s a and d you can move your rocket you see i can move my rocket left and right and stuff now in the beginning you're going to get very confused in in terms of uh, your relation to it like for example now if i move right it actually goes right but not the way that you think so remember, when you're moving right, left, up, and down, W, A, S, and D, always look at this globe. You're going to be moving right, left, up, and down in relation to this globe, not in relation to what you see. That's something that'll take quite a while to used to, to, to get used to. So anyways, this is the basic stuff. This is That's it. You launch your rocket, and uh, we are going at nearly 100. If you right-click your actual tank, you see how much fuel is left. And we have 133 units left of fuel. 
Uh, let's just go straight up. Let's 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 just let this fuel burn out. You know, just just for the basic principle. I am obviously going straight up. You know, so so th so that's what you should do in the beginning. All you need is obviously a cockpit and some fuel and an engine, and off you go. And you see the horizon sort of ending, and we're nearly at twenty thousand meters high, which is great. Our fuel should finish anytime soon, and off it goes. See, now that's the basic principle of building a rocket. It's not really complicated. You need a jet engine, a fuel tank that has a both liquid liquid uh, fuel and oxidizer, and uh, your cockpit. Now, in case you're building a uh, jet engine, using a jet engine, you need oxygen. You need to supply it with oxygen. You don't need to supply it with oxidizer. You need to supply it with oxygen. And for that, you go to your... Where was it? Aerodynamics. Now you have the, either the radial tanks, which is this, which supplies it air, of course, or you have this, which is a larger air intake. Okay? Now, same principle. You launch it, and because you have the air, it launches itself. So that's pretty much it. Now let's just take this a step further. Let's just say this is all good. Now the basic things that you need to do is make sure that you have some variant control method. You have SAS to control your ship and you have RCS to control your ship. Now I would pause this video, click in the description below and go to my SAS and RCS tutorials, watch them through and then jump back and watch this. So I presume you have watched them and now you're back. So the main thing is, when you build your ship, of course you need some control. Now, when you're in the atmosphere, which helps is the actual uh, SAS. So we're going to get our advanced SAS, we're going to stick that on. And then we're going to get our RCS, of course, so we have a little control when we are in space. Because, you know, controlling in space is the hardest thing. So we're going to go to our ships, and you have only two tanks of RCS. You have the large one. And you have the small, small one. Maybe you, as the game progresses, you'll have various more tanks. Of course, you have the mini, mini one here. Monopropellant, it's called. You see resources, monopropellant 40, monopropellant 750, and 100. So you have even a midget monopropellant. So, but we'll stick to the small one, not the midget one. So now we have our RCS, so we can control our movements within the atmosphere and generally stop our ship from spinning on its axis, clockwise or counterclockwise or whatever, that prevents that from happening. And we have our RCS gas, which will help us to move in space. Don't worry, it's not a lot. Pretty much every ship you build will have either a cockpit manned or unmanned, an RCS and an SAS unit. So same thing. Now I'm going to have this. So, now we just add the engine to it. And of course, the RCS tank without the RCS thrusters is pointless. Now you got two. You got the nice big bulky RCS thrusters, which are these, which blow up, down, left, and right. And uh, then you got the smaller linear ports. The problem with the linear ports is they burn only one way. So if you want to move any other way, you're going to have to put RCS thrusters to all four directions to get that done. Now, because I have such a small ship, what I'm going to do is this is the symmetry. So for example, if I want three, you see now I have three. If I want four, now I'm going to have four, you see, around the ship, and I can so forth increase it. Now you have the snap-on thing, the angle snap-on, which uh, pretty much snaps on. And then you have, if you remove the angle snap-on, snap on, I can't even speak, you have, you can pretty much put it anywhere you want. And now, of course, to keep it, you, you got to keep it symmetrical, so keep the angle snap-on on. And then when uh, you get the angle, sn angle snap-on on... <laughs> Once you get the angle snap on on, of course, we don't want to put like 20 million of these. We're going to put, let's say, three. Three is more than enough for such a small ship. And uh, then you're going to put the center of mass. And uh, obviously right in the center of mass because it's a small ship. Preferably, obviously, when you don't have such a small ship, you put it at the top, most top part and at the most bottom part. But because it's such a small ship, I don't want to put up and down because... Uh, especially with uh, these type of thrusters because they consume a lot of RCS. Uh, if I'm going to have, let's say, one up or uh, two up and two down, that'll consume a lot, of, a lot of RCS very quickly, you know, for a small ship like this. So I've just put it in the dead center and that should be more than enough to make the ship move when I'm in space. So now let's uh, launch this thing. Again, this is just uh, the uh, basic idea so you guys have an idea of how this stuff works. So... Uh, I'm going to switch on now my SAS. You see I put I pushed T and that switches on. If I push R, automatically my actual gas things will start to work. So 
Let's launch that again. Watch that now because I have my SAS on, which is this little thing that I attached. It uh, pretty much stays pointed exactly where I put it to. So if I move a little bit to the right and I put T, it stays pointed to that point. If I move back and I put T, it stays pointed to that point. So that's the cool thing about having the SAS. It stays uh, locked to that actual point of origin. Now, the, this is nice when you're in the atmosphere, but once you leave the atmosphere, you're going to need to use your RCS to uh, be able to do that. Now, what your RCS does is obviously watch my tutorial, so you'll know that. So this is the basic concept in terms of how to build your actual rocket. Now... Uh, I think I'll end it at this. This is the, actually the basic tutorial in terms of how to build your rocket. So what I would recommend now to do after this, you should watch in how to get to the orbit uh, tutorial and take a look in how in terms to get to the orbit. You should go about it uh, with these steps. This would be the quickest way. So lesson one's over. Watch now how to get to the orbit. And then from there, you will work forward to, of course, my other tutorials. So that, that should pretty much be it for you guys. And... Uh, Hope this helped you out a little bit. This is for all you beginners out there. And uh, let me know in case you want any other tutorials or you're confused in terms of uh, other things about the game itself. Take care. Bye.